Yo, what's going on gamers? Today we're doing a Minecraft Let's Play, but instead of giving money to the cruel, unforgiving, cold-hearted hands of Microsoft, we're gonna be doing it entirely in Desmos. This is a 2D graphing calculator designed to teach children how to cheat on their maths exams, but instead it's being used as another cheap Minecraft ripoff. This was originally created by KM Kevin, who clearly knows way more Desmos than me. Hang on a minute, Obama's calling. Obama have dead. You're right, pal. So yeah, go subscribe to KN Kevin, link in the description. So you start out floating above this sky block, which is similar to what I had, to be honest, because I thought, how am I gonna stop it from lagging so badly? And there was only one thing was reduce the number of blocks, and a good way to do that was to create a sky block. You can move around using this joystick here, which, that is pretty smooth. The rendering is so perfect and smooth that you could almost forget that this is Desmos and just start playing the game. Let me see if I can full screen it. This is insane. So we have four buttons here. We've got sprint, jump, and sneak, and inventory. And there's all these blocks that you can choose from. So you can just pick a slot in your hotbar, then select the block you want, and you can start building. Now there's also this settings page and you can turn off flight go back to game and boom, you drop down to the ground. You can move the camera and punch wood. You can also adjust your FOV. So you can adjust your brightness, go up to 100% and whoa, look at that, that's bright, bright colors now. You can toggle day and night, toggle the controls and even toggle the sky. <laughs> look at that. So you can see all the Minecraft blocks, but you can also see that this is still a graphing calculator. This, this is all just equations. So if you go back into settings, you can also see that there's this save and quit to title. And if you do that, you'll see that there's actually three separate world saves. So if you go on this middle one, this world has a nether portal. Let's see if we can go into the nether. So we can't go into the nether, but if we jump off the island and you look up, you can you just go further and further and further. So maybe something we can implement in the next version is if we have a death screen and like a respawn button. Save and quit to title. Let's have a look at this third world. <laughs> third world. I wonder if it's India. No, it's not India. It's a little house. Let's go inside. Oh, I like this. It's like I'm actually playing Minecraft. The cool part as well is if I go back to the first world here, you'll see that all my changes are still saved. I am literally a homosexual. Cut that out of the video, right? You better not put that in. Now I know what you're thinking. How does a 3D image get projected into a 2D graph? And it's actually a lot simpler than you look. So basically, you just have an eye here and a projection point here. So if you want to look at where the projection point is, then you have to have a screen blah, here blah, to intersect blah, with the line. Blah, we want to boring, find out where this point boring. intersects with this. I've made a full video explaining how to make a 3D engine in Desmos and another one making Minecraft in Desmos. If you want to check those out, then links are in the description. It seems like the main thing KN Kevin changed was using an array to store all the block IDs, similar to what Infinite Coda did in part three, which allows you to actually place new blocks and break them. He also did a very good job of face culling, which is where you don't render the faces that aren't shown, and it's probably why his doesn't lag so much. Uh, so yeah, honestly, all you need is a health bar, crafting, and a death screen, and you've got a playable, semi-playable version of Minecraft in Desmos. If you want to try it for yourself, link in the description, like, comment, subscribe, and piss off.